I've got some crock pot recipes that you do not want to miss. There's nothing cozier than a good old slow cooker meal, especially this time of year. Hey y'all, I'm Valerie and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm sharing five of the best crock pot recipes. They're easy to make and most importantly, absolutely delicious. Now let's go ahead and get started. This crock pot marry me chicken is amazing. You just gotta try it. In a large measuring cup, I have one and a half cups of chicken broth, and to that, I'm adding three tablespoons of cornstarch. Then just stir that until all the lumps are gone, and then set it to the side. We'll be using it here shortly. Now over to the crock pot, I'm adding in three boneless skinless chicken breasts. That was about one and a half pounds there. Now I'm just covering that with the broth and cornstarch mixture. I'm also adding one cup of heavy cream, about a fourth of a cup of Parmesan cheese, and one tablespoon of minced garlic. And y'all do know I gotta season this up, and I'm adding in quite a bit. And that was a teaspoon of onion powder, a pinch of red pepper flakes, three-fourths teaspoon each of salt and pepper, two teaspoons of paprika, and one and a half tablespoons of Italian seasoning and also one third cup of sun-dried tomatoes. And you don't have to do this, but I do like to cut mine into smaller pieces. Now I'm topping it off with four tablespoons of butter and you can just lay them right on top there. Now you're gonna cover it and I set mine to cook on low for six hours. Now here it is done and that chicken is completely cooked through. And doesn't this look delicious? My house smelled absolutely amazing. Craig walked in the door and he immediately said, something smells good. And that chicken was so tender, it was just falling apart. So I used my little meat chopper there to shred it up. And by the way, if this is your first time here and you love easy recipes, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. That way you get notified of all my future videos. After I got that all shredded, I did stir it up a little bit just to mix everything together. And we like to have this served over white rice. But you could serve this over pasta or mashed potatoes or anything your family loves. This is one of my family's favorites. It is always so good. And I really hope you give it a try. When I'm craving comfort food, I like to make this chicken stew. I could seriously eat it all year round. To my crock pot, I added one tablespoon of oil and two tablespoons of melted butter. Now I'm adding half a diced onion and I did try to sprinkle those out into an even layer. I also added one cup of baby carrots that I cut into quarters. My family likes them cut a little smaller. That way they cook down a little more tender in the end. I washed and diced three large red potatoes and added those in along with one cup of frozen green beans. And on top of those veggies, I added three boneless skinless chicken breasts and I did cut mine in half just because they were a little on the thicker side. Now I'm gonna make up a delicious creamy sauce to pour over that chicken. In a medium sized bowl, I added one can of cream of chicken soup Next, you're gonna add in one cup of sour cream and one cup of whole milk. And it's very important that you cook this low and slow. If you cook it on high, the milk and dairy may curdle and you don't want that. And for the seasonings, I added half a teaspoon of salt, one fourth teaspoon of black pepper, three teaspoons of Italian seasoning, and one packet of the ranch seasoning. Now give that a really good mix until it's all well combined. Now I'm taking this back over to the crock pot and I'm just gonna pour it evenly over the top of that chicken.
I just spread that out to make sure the chicken was completely covered. Then I put the lid on and you're going to set it to cook on low for six to eight hours. Mine usually only takes about five or six though. You just want to check it and make sure that chicken is cooked through. It was getting close to done here. So I had to take a quick little peek to see how it was looking. And it doesn't look the best here, but just wait till the end. Okay, I wanted to make some homemade Cheddar Bay biscuits to go with this. So I figured I'd take you along with me and show you how I do it. I started out by melting one stick of butter. Then I set it to the side to use a little later on. It's gonna need to cool down just a little bit. In a large bowl, I added two cups of all-purpose flour along with a teaspoon of sugar. And don't worry, this does not make it sweet. I also added half a teaspoon of baking soda and two teaspoons of baking powder. And I do like to sift my baking powder, that way I get rid of all those lumps. I'm adding a few more seasonings, three-fourths teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and one-fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I gave that a quick little stir, then I set it to the side so I could grab that butter that had been cooling for a bit. And to that butter, I added one cup of cold buttermilk. You're gonna whisk that and you'll see small lumps start to form. Now pour that butter and buttermilk right on into your dry ingredients. And you'll notice that I started to mix this and then I stopped because I forgot to add the cheese. That was one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. I should have added that to the dry ingredients, but oh well, better late than never. Can't really call them Cheddar Bay Biscuits without the cheese. <laughs> I stirred that until just combined, don't over mix. Now I'm grabbing my sheet pan and I'm using a large cookie scoop for this. That way all my biscuits are the same size. And I ended up with 10. These bake at 450 for 12 minutes. And while those are in the oven, I'm going to finish up the stew. I stirred it around a little bit to try to knock most of that cream mixture off of that chicken. Then I removed it to a separate plate to shred. That chicken was so tender, it was just falling apart. I started to shred it right in the crock pot there. But then I decided to take it out and shred it and then add it right back in just so I could make sure I got everything shredded. And if you wanted to, you could also dice your chicken and do it that way. Whatever makes your heart happy. I'm just giving that a good stir. And this stew is really so easy to make. Oh, and by the way, if you're enjoying these easy recipes, I would really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up. It really does help out my channel. And I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. The biscuits are about to come out of the oven, so I'm going to make up a quick butter topping. In a small bowl, I have three tablespoons of melted butter. I added half a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of dried parsley. I stirred that around. The biscuits are done. The tops got nice and golden brown. Now I'm covering them with that butter mixture. These are so good and you really have to give them a try. I know you can buy the Red Lobster mix at the store, but I don't always keep that on hand. And I think making them homemade tastes even better. This dinner was absolutely delicious. It's definitely one of my family's favorites. I mean, look at that. If you're craving a big bowl of comfort food, this is what you need to make. This cracked chicken is easy to make, and there are so many different ways you can use it. I started out by spraying my crock pot with some nonstick spray. Then I added in three boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Now I'm covering those with one packet of ranch seasoning. Then I added on one block of softened cream cheese. And that's it for now. I covered it and set it to cook on low for six hours or however long it takes for that chicken to be cooked through. That chicken is done, so I'm removing it to a separate plate to shred and then adding it right back in. I gave it a really good stir to make sure that cream cheese was completely mixed in before I added in the rest. 
Okay, if you want to cook up your own bacon, you go right ahead. I just added a 2.4 ounce package of real bacon pieces and one and a half cups of shredded cheddar cheese. Stir it up and then this is ready to serve. I like to serve it on the big hoagie sub rolls, but you could also serve it on hamburger buns. And for Lacey's, she likes it when I add some to a soft tortilla, roll it up tight, and toast it in a skillet with a little butter. You could even serve it on top of a baked potato. Add a little butter, top it with that chicken mixture, and you have yourself a loaded chicken bacon ranch baked potato. I think you and your family are going to love this crock pot chicken and gnocchi. I sprayed my crock pot with some nonstick spray, then I added in three boneless skinless chicken breasts, along with two cans of cream of chicken soup. If you wanted, you could do one can of cream of chicken and one can of cream of mushroom, or you could even do a cream of chicken and a cream of celery. That would be good too. Now you're also going to add in some water, so I'm just filling both of those cans with water and adding that in. Next, I'm adding three teaspoons of the Better Than Bouillon chicken paste, or you could use the cubes. I'm adding one tablespoon of the Kinder's garlic and herb seasoning, but this stuff does have a little kick to it, so if you don't like things too spicy, I maybe would add one or two teaspoons of some all-purpose seasoning. I'm not adding the gnocchi right now. I was in a hurry, so I'm setting this to cook on low. I usually do about four, four to five hours just until that chicken is cooked through. When it's done, you can remove it to a separate plate and shred it or dice it up and then add it back in. I just broke mine up with the tongs there. You just wanna make sure that you don't add the gnocchi until after the chicken is done because the gnocchi doesn't need to cook for long at all. I stirred everything together, mix it up really good. Now I'm adding in two of the 16 ounce packages of gnocchi. And this is not refrigerated or anything. I just find it on the pasta aisle usually. And just try to break these up as you add them in because they do tend to try to stick together. And so the gnocchi is kind of taking the place of dumplings here. And if you're in the mood for some good old easy chicken and dumplings, this is definitely the way you need to do it. After you get that gnocchi all mixed in, you're going to cover it back up and let it continue to cook on high for about 20 to 30 minutes, or just whenever the gnocchi is tender. And this recipe comes from Kat. Her channel was Southern Farm and Kitchen, but now it's R252 Life, but I'll have that linked in my description box. Kat has some really great recipes, and this one is amazing. I just served it with a dinner roll on the side. If I would have had time, I would have made some cornbread. And nope, you don't see any veggies here. This is for my husband, and he just wasn't feeling them this night. This is another good one. It's Crock-Pot Creamy Fiesta Chicken. I'm adding in half a diced onion, along with one can of rinsed and drained pinto beans. Or you could also do black beans. I added one can of Rotel, undrained, and one can of drained corn. I just love these dump and go recipes. They make my busy days a whole lot easier. Now I'm adding in three boneless skinless chicken breasts. And for the seasonings, I added two teaspoons of minced garlic. And I've got a packet of taco seasoning and a packet of ranch. I'm just adding half of each packet. But if you'd rather, you could add in one whole packet of taco seasoning or one whole packet of ranch or you could even do a packet of the Hidden Valley Fiesta Ranch. Go ahead and cover this and set it to cook on low for six hours. And y'all, it really just depends on your crock pot on how hot it gets. So I always recommend checking it an hour or two before because you just don't want to overcook chicken. So when that chicken was done, I just removed it to a separate bowl and I used my hand mixer to shred it up. This is my favorite way to shred chicken. Sometimes I do go a little overboard though and shred it to smithereens. <laughs> so if you want it in bigger chunks, just um, don't do it for as long. And I wish I had added the cream cheese earlier, but now I'm adding one block of softened cream cheese. You could even pop it in the microwave for 10 to 15 seconds. I covered it and let it continue to cook for 30 more minutes 
just to give that cream cheese time to soften up. And after 30 minutes, I gave everything a really good stir to make sure it was all well combined. This recipe is delicious. And it's also another one that you can serve in so many different ways. You could serve it over pasta, some Mexican rice, or even tortilla chips. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You may also like these. Don't forget to subscribe down below for more easy recipes, and I will see you in the next one.